So, as you, as you know, if you watch any of my content, I'm very big on conditioning. And I've said it multiple times that, you know, out of everything, more so than diet, more so than lifting, it's the frequency and type of the conditioning that I do that has had the most robust effect on my health markers. And that's the main reason why I do it so often. And one of the most important markers that I use to kind of track the progression of my conditioning are the wattage in each session and the FTPs, the functional threshold power. So like watts per kilogram and how I'm trending in that from workout to workout. So the question is often asked me, well, why watts as opposed to say heart rate, for instance, as a metric to determine the efficacy of my particular work. The thing about wattage is wattage is more dependable because wattage is like load. It's like weight, okay? 25 pounds is 25 pounds. 40 pounds is 40 pounds. 300 watts is 300 watts of effort. Now, the more fit you are, the more wattage you can put out with less effort. The stronger you are, the more you can lift with less effort. However, it's scalable though. Heavier things are still going to take more work to move. But something like heart rate can be affected independently of the actual effort of the activity. What do I mean by that? So if I'm sprinting, for, for instance, okay, there is a certain amount of effort that that's going to require. And then because of that effort, there are artifacts like my respiration and my heart rate and uh, energy system utilization, right? That has to happen in order for me to perform that activity. So because of that, that activity is going to yield a specific training effect. However, just because my heart rate is 210, because I don't know, like, I took methamphetamines or something doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to get the training effect of my VO2 max improvement, the same as I would if I'm doing hill sprints. So I can get an equivalent heart rate from those two different activities. One yields a training effect, one doesn't. Or conversely, if I've had a very stressful week, uh, if you have crappy sleep for several days in a row, if you have a certain medical condition, if you take certain drugs, supplements, whatever, there's a host of different things that can affect your heart rate going into or coming out of a training session. So it's not to say that heart rate isn't a good thing to track, but it's just not as dependable as wattage because regardless of whatever else is going on, that wattage is a snapshot of how much effort that you are putting into doing what you're doing that particular conditioning session, regardless of any of those other factors. Those other factors can affect the wattage, but the wattage is the, the, the end of the equation, regardless of whatever else is put into it. It's like, you know, uh, a volume equation, like, you know, sets times reps times weight. There are factors outside of that that are gonna influence your total total volume at the end of that equation, like how tired you are, what you did beforehand, how much you ate, so on and so forth, accumulated fatigue. There's all kinds of co-founding factors, but at the end of the day, like that number that you get is, it is what it is. That's, that is an objective measurement that you can then take and track from workout to workout to use to track your progression. And then if you're a thinking athlete or a thinking coach, you're gonna take into account those co-founding variables to how you came to those numbers. But at the end of the day, the numbers are what matters. That's what we track in our training and that's what we track in sport and in life right? It's like sweat. 
I've known people in the past that are like, yeah, you know, like I had a good workout. I, I broke a sweat. Well, you know, <laughs> just because it's summer in Arizona and you're walking around, it's 118 degrees outside and you're sweating profusely, that doesn't mean that you're some kind of fat burning machine all of a sudden. If that were the case, then everyone that lived in warm climates would be super lean. It's not, right? Perspiration is not necessarily a correlate of the type of activity that yields, you know, a training effect, yields uh, fat oxidation, for instance, if we're taking that as, as the training effect that we're going for. But I can say if I go at 300 watts for, so that's my intensity at 45, 50 minutes, that's my duration. I can say, specific to me anyways, that the training effect that that is going to yield, amongst other things, is some amount of fat oxidation. The amount of perspiration I get from the two things are equivalent. I could sweat just as much walking around outside in the summer in 118 degrees as I do during that 45 minutes, 50 minutes of conditioning, but one yields a training effect, one doesn't. So in conclusion, I guess what I'm trying to say is I track wattage because of the same reason why I track reps and sets and weight and mileage is because these are objective measurements that then I can use to qualify the other things like heart rate, like pounds on the scale, like perspiration, like uh, RPE, rate of perceived exertion. These other factors that have this tremendous delta, this like big up and down uh, peaks and valleys sine wave that by themselves don't really mean much, but when put into context, with a more dependable metric like wattage, weight, mileage, things like this, they all of a sudden paint a more meaningful picture of my progression day to day, week to week, month to month, workout to workout. So, you know, track things like weight and heart rate and how much you sweat and how you feel. It's all tools, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is how hard you work, how long you do it, and laterally, how frequently of those two. And you do that with things like wattage and pounds and miles and time. Stay in the fight.